Hops and Stocks podcast is presented by 100 Spoke Media Group. We encourage our listeners to drink responsibly. Please note, we are not financial advisors. We do not offer or provide financial advice. I'm Spoke affiliated from the city. Welcome back to the Hops and Stocks podcast. This is episode 32. Uh, brought to you by 100 Spoke Media Group. We got the homie Rich James. Uh, Rich is a graduate of UC with 17 years of data, anal- data analytics and programming experience. Uh, Rich also owns Five Strength and Conditioning in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, Rich is also a bourbon, NFT, crypto, and stock enthusiast. So you man, we'll right get the rich, man. We'll get the rich, man. Let's do these nah. deals, man. <laughs> I was about to say, rich chilling, right man. Rich chilling, man. <laughs> What's yeah, up, so, rich? Uh, How you doing? Good. How y'all doing? Hey, man. We're glad you made it, man. Good. Yeah, man. Yeah, Thanks yeah. for joining us. Nick the, oh yeah, Nick I appreciate. Time. I appreciate you guys having me on, man. Yeah, you've been on the field. All right, man. So, like Doug said, like we always do about this time, man. Let's kick it over to uh, Mr. What's in this can. What you sipping right, on tonight, hold B-Dub? Hold on, man. I, I mean, our, our guy, Doug, has had a really tough evening, man. B-Dub, do, do you want to let this guy go first, man? He's, he's been talking about he needs the beer bad. I do, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm a down. Go ahead. All right. Chug, chug, chug. Actually, it's one of your uh, one of your favorites, B-Dub, Street Side. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. You shout shout, shout out last to Street week. Side, man. You had this one last week? No, nah, you, you, I think nah, you, you were, were talking, talking about, about you was going Oh, yeah, yeah. I was, I was looking forward to it. So when I thought I wasn't going to be able to pie it, I was a little upset. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pour it, but the the notes are um, – it's a Berliner Weiss with uh, blackberry, blueberry, and raspberry. It's only 4.5 APV, so I'm, I'm about to down a couple of them. I'm going to give you a <laughs> nice little pour. <laughs> I mean, this plant man is planning on getting smacked on the pot. Yeah, I mean, when you go back to work, <laughs> it, might, it might be all bad news when you get back to work. Yeah, it's a oh, nice no. color. Nice color. Yeah, Burliner Wise is uh, one of the show's favorite styles, man. You, usually those end up being fire. Yeah, they take well to them fruit flavors. Let me. The nose. Mm. The nose is delicious. <laughs> he says, oh, heck yes. Hey man, he's over still. He's still smelling Drano. Let <laughs> me clear that out with his nose. Orange peel. <laughs> oh man, he's, oh. Going for, he's going for a kill. Oh, hey man, this dude is open. <laughs> That's good, man. So, street side does a good job, man. I'm, blueberry. I'm not. I'm not really a blueberry person because they're kind of tart, but the. Uh, the raspberry and the blueberry, they work well together, man. And a little blackberry. So you're getting all the berries. This is like a healthy beer. Hey, hey, James. Mr. James, this is a healthy beer, man. <laughs> <laughs> you can drink this before you go live. Yeah, I don't know if I recommend that for a pre-workout. Like a protein but... <laughs> beer, man. Go ahead. Hey, hey, Doug, uh, what's the name of that one? Uh, oh, heck yes. Okay, all right. Street Side Brewery out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Ohio, excuse me, and uh, you know I don't have my bifocals, man. But I already gave you all the notes, and the notes yeah, are here. Yeah, you gave and us she, the notes, and and you know they they make her look like the notes, man. Like a little blueberry, a little purple, a little blackberry. So you know, oh, let me see. The, let me see the can again. Okay, it looked like the the little girl off of um, Willy Wonka when she what? ate the uh, the oh, little yeah. the blueberries just turned yeah. purple. Yeah, violet. Yeah. So I'm gonna kill this. I get yeah. this. Uh, you know the eight the the alcohol content is pretty low, four point five ABV, but uh, taste is there, man. Um, quality craft. I give this four and a quarter. Um, I would I would share it with guys because I would you know I wouldn't be embarrassed to share it with you guys. <laughs> I'm not sharing now. Hey, and, man, and it's healthy. Have- and it's healthy. It has what are those. What are those uh, those foods called? Superfoods, the blackberries and the raspberries. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know I'm talking about Rich James. <laughs> <laughs> so whoever's up next, I'm gonna uh, keep drinking. Cheers yeah, obviously, man. man. How's everybody doing though? How's everybody's week coming? 
Well, not, not, not bad, good, man. man. Not yeah. bad at all. No I'm complaints, man. Ask how y'all doing? Cause I know y'all was worried about me and my sink. <laughs> uh, go ahead, B Dub, man. Wu Tang. Okay. Uh, I don't even know how to go second. <laughs> I, know. Uh, I, I know you better say, let's talk about it. Yeah, man. It's been a glitch in the Matrix. <laughs> man. Oh, but yeah, yeah, it was well deserved. Man, he, he could go first. Uh, so yeah, let's talk about it. Uh, this one is M43 from a brewery called Old Nation Brewery. Uh, this was recommended. I went to a, a cigar bar like two weeks ago, and there's a guy in there, and um, I was passing out some um, cards to him. And he recommended this one, so I gave it a shot. Um, I already poured it. Let me see what it looked like. Oh, man. They, they be crying when I put it in my, my championship chalice, so I put it in this one. That's a different chalice, isn't it? Yeah, yeah man. Still makes it taste like a turd, man. They get, they get the crying. <laughs> So this is a 6.8 on the ABV, uh, 65 on the um, IBU. So it's, it's kind of hoppy. Um, as you can see, you know, it, 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 it is what it looks like. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's citrus, it's tropical, it's light, smooth. Um, this is what I would call um, a transition beer. Like if you're not into craft beer and you just like drink Corona and stuff, this would be a, you know, a, a beer you can take and, and transition to the craft side. So this is this is a cool one right here. So you are you already been up on that one before then. Okay. Yeah, this is good right here. It's light, it's an easy reach. Um, it's out of um Williamston, Michigan. Um, yeah. This is cool right here. I gave it a four and a quarter. Um mm -hmm. taste that grapefruit, you taste that citrus. This is cool right here, man. Mm -hmm. But did you even drink it? Like I didn't even see I've, already, I've already had two of them. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> you, you had two of, two of them pre pod? Nah, previously. So I already know. Oh, what this is. Okay, I got you. So once again, this is a M forty three out of um, Michigan um, Old Nation Brewing Company. So I really I love what's in this can, actually. So I'm gonna give it a four and a quarter. Did they give any context to what M forty three means? I don't know. Maybe it's a firecracker. I don't know. Man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's some loud joints. What you got, what you got there, Blast? All right, uh, fellas, I'm gonna take it uh, over the river a little bit to Newport, Kentucky. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with uh, you know our theme from last week. Uh, we're gonna continue celebrating uh, Women's History Month, um, and I got a beer from a female-owned brewery called Wooden Cast Brewing Company. What I have tonight is their double barrel brownie. It's a Scottish stout. It's aged twice in bourbon barrels with cocoa nibs added. Um, I got a little bit more info um, off of, I think this is untapped. It says uh, the stout is aged in New Riff bourbon barrels and then transferred to Buffalo Trace bourbon barrels that's why you get the double barrel name. And then it's got copious amounts of cocoa nibs added to the barrel to provide a subtle brownie flavor. Um, and the, the big thing about this guy is it's 13.1. Wow, so, I was about to say, man, that sounds fire, man. Yeah, I'm excited to get into it. Uh, I, I had it sitting for, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes now. Uh, you can get the color here. This, this came in a bottle too. I'll show you the bottle in a second. Um, but yeah, it smells good. So we're going to go down the hatch and see, see if it match. Yeah, that's pretty good, man. And you definitely get that, uh, that bourbon flavor off of it. Um, New Riff is um, also from Newport, Kentucky. E, you know where Buffalo Trace is from? Uh, Buffalo, Buffalo Trace is down on that. It's between Louisville and uh, Lexington. It's on the um, bourbon trail. Yeah, it's on a bourbon okay. trail. So yeah, I think nice it's bourbon flavor, good chocolate notes. I think I would give this guy about four and a half. Four and a you, half. Said, you said it's barrel age? That's pretty good. Twi twice barrel age, yeah. And How, then, what's, uh, the, what's the price point of that? I think this was like four, four at HH. $4 for 13%? Yeah. Well, 
That's a good value, man. So shout out to Wooden Cask. I, I had been wanting to try them for a long time. I, I drive by it a lot. And I mean, the name sounds cool. It just makes it seem like it's made in a different type of container. You know, I don't know if you know what a cask is, but I was just like, ah. But I never tried it. And then uh, when E passed around that information last week about, you know, the female owned breweries, I was like, oh, shoot, Wooden Cask is female owned. And it's, you know, right here. So easy so, to grab one. Good taste. Shout out to Wooden Cask Brewery. Wooden Cask. Must, must be good, man. Four and a half. Yeah, 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 four and a half is solid, man. It's it's got a little bit of the extra jig taste, um, but you know, at thirteen, you kind of expect that. So, from the is bourbon. that brownie? Is that brownie flavor coming through? Um, the the bear, uh, the the bourbon's a little stronger than the the brownie, but I mean, on the notes, it does say you know subtle on the brownie. So, okay, gotcha. Pro- probably could have hit the the chocolate a little harder, but. Definitely one for uh you know the people that enjoy the bourbon. Yeah, hey, so Rich, pass it, it on over. The to bourbon guy, do you ever mess with um like the bourbon style beers or? Oh yeah, that's that's all I rock with. I, okay. I'm, I'm a Goose Island fan. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got like I got you, like you got some on you. 20, yeah, I got like probably twenty something of them sitting on the shelf right now. Oh really? Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, that was our yeah. uh was that our our first. 2022. Yeah, that might have been episode one. You yeah, know, that was episode season. Episode one, one, of one of season. season. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I got them still aging. I, I got some from 2018 because you know a lot of them. You know, what I'm saying considering the bottle and age up to five years. Right. So I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a crack them things. What did you get this, uh, this from this year's haul? Uh, what did I get? Let me see. Not to put you on the spot, but just curious. Yeah. No, nah, it's all good. A good, good looking bourbon shelf you got back there you too. The bourbon yeah. background. Oh yes, that's nice background. Definitely a definitely a Buffalo Trace fan. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, I just I just gra- grabbed that. Uh, what was that? That. Oh, uh, you got that Coca Cola. The Coca Cola. Yeah, yeah that Coca Cola, yeah, good, bro. I think I gave that. Yeah, I gave that a five. Yeah, I got I got this guy right here. The uh, it's a uh, stout aged and bourbon barrel spinach with uh with cherry wood. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That, that, and then one, I got this. That one was quite a joke. Yeah, and this one right here was the uh, finished with the brown sugar, citrus, coriander, and spices with uh, some notes of vanilla. Okay, yeah. is that is that the cola one? Yeah, that's the cola one, right? Yep, yeah, that's the cola yeah, style. Yeah, yeah, yeah that one yeah. Re- that one received our highest rating. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I thoroughly this one, that one. Actually, I got one over there waiting. Yeah, this one right here is one of my favorites. This is from uh, 2020. The uh, it's the oatmeal style aged in. Um, uh, I think it was uh, Buffalo Trace Barrels, and it's topped off with uh, coffee and uh, brown sugar. Oh, oh man. That's like fire. Yeah, I, I didn't get my hands on yeah. that one. Yeah, that was legit. That's that one was of my probably, That was probably a thirty dollar bottle. Oh yeah, that was that was that was every bit of twenty four dollars. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it sounds like we're gonna have to have a tasting over at Rich's house. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, e, right. I, e, I passed the baton to you, man. What you got in your cup? It's baton to me. Hey, man, I'm continuing my journey down here in Mexico, man, trying some some fine Mexican brew. Um, I mean, have you been exiled, man? Are you going to come back? Nah, man, I'm never coming back, man. <laughs> have you been exiled from the United States, man? <laughs> man, yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm expatting, bro. <laughs> they, they, they ain't got no extradition laws in Mexico. <laughs> 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 hey, man, Hops and Stocks Fugitive, man. But you um, gotta you gotta you gotta change your screen name to your international name. Man. International E, yeah, man. Uh Enrique. Enrique, Enrique yeah. yeah. I'm Manila. I heard, I heard it was international <laughs> scene. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> moving right along. Hey, so <laughs> smooth transition. All right, moving right along. So we got this uh it's called Calavera Paco Pacto. Um, and this is a 5.2 ABV Munich Dunkel Lager Amber Oscura. Unfortunately, I have not brushed up on my Espanol, so I have no clue what any of I that means. I got you, man. I told you that if you need if you need some lessons, man, I'm I'm <laughs> like 25% fluent. All right, well, you can translate that. <laughs> All I know is amber is red. And uh, as you can see, the beer is a nice, it's kind of like a, a reddish brown color. Um, yes, sir. looks really good with the sun shining off of it. 
uh, you don't get that full effect on screen. But this um, it's actually an interesting bottle, man. Like they got like I don't know if I see it, but like all the stats of the brew on the side of the oh, beer. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's a uh, it's same drink between five and seven degrees Celsius. I don't know what OG stand for, but I'm thinking OG is pretty cool. It says 13, IBU 27, EBC 39. Once again, I have zero clue what any of this means, and I probably should have did more research before selecting this beer. But um, it's, it's tasty, man. Taste, man. It's all about the taste, huh? man. Fuck off. Yeah, it, it's Fuck tasty, man. Like, with the IBU being low, you're getting a really drinkable amber. Um, yeah, like I said, once again, hoppy. yeah, it's not hoppy at all, man. Um, I mean, the IB, uh, IPA? If the, if the IBU is low, it's not hoppy. Yeah, it's a Munich Dunkel. Oh, okay, gotcha. So that, I was gonna say that's like the second red IPA you done had down there. Nah, this is more, more, more on the. I think Dunkel is more line. Yeah, more German. along the lines of German. Yeah. Um, it's flavorful, man. Um, I can't really describe the notes because they don't like really pair to like like food notes, but it's a drinkable beer, man. Um, I would probably get this four and a quarter. It's definitely something I would drink again. Um, five point two ABV. Not something that's going to put you under if you drink more than one. Um, but I'm starting to realize, man, Mexico, Mexico does, does, does beer well. I've had several offerings from several different breweries in the <clears throat> excuse me, two weeks that I've been here. And I really haven't had anything that was bad. Um, now, a lot of their stuff is lagers and light, lighter profile beers. Like lagers, you mean? <laughs> oh, yeah, lagers. As Cerveza? Cool would say. Cerveza, you mean? Oh, Cerveza, Cerveza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But once again, man, this is a Calavera beer, Pacto. Um, I think they're out of San Jose somewhere. 5.2. So your company is at a, like a local like um, corner store or something? Um, so honestly, you can get beer everywhere. You can get beer at the gas station, the carryouts. Um, the Walmart here, actually, I'm going to post a picture on the Hops and Stocks page, man. The Walmart here probably has the best selection I've ever seen in a Walmart, man. And you can you can buy singles in the Walmart, oh, so that's right. That's where I've been going. I just been walking over to the Walmart, just grabbing a bunch of different singles, um, and then I went to I've been to two breweries since I've been down here, uh, Baja, and then La Pintada, which I don't believe La Pintada makes their own beer, or if they do, I didn't see like the uh, the brewing equipment. Um, but yeah, the ability to buy singles is is cool because these these beers are like literally like two dollars like two and three dollars um i could buy a six pack for like three dollars and 25 cents so I, I it's cool man like mexico is cheap as hell man um and this is a really good beer i'm like i said i'm gonna give it a four and a quarter uh calibre signing off um but once again signing off on the on the beer side of things we like to rewalk on our guests rich are you joining us for uh, oh, a beer beer? review What's that? Did Are you, you joining us and doing a beer review? Oh, no, no, no. I'm good. No, I'm okay, not, okay. All right. right I, I got some. Yeah. I thought hey, maybe man. you were hopping in. If that man if that man hops in, he has like three fire offerings, man. He would just outshot <laughs> everybody. <laughs> yeah, he, he, said, I, I, he said he ain't wasting none of that good brew on us. <laughs> right, yeah, <laughs> man. He's like, I ain't cracking up on hops and stocks. Oh, hey, he's, he's still man. aging. He was like, man, if y'all still doing this show in 2026, then hit me up, man. Like, <laughs> I'll be man, ready to crack one of these. Let's book him now, man. Let's book him now. Yeah. Oh, man, yeah. Yeah, that yeah, 18. You know, Rich, man, we, um, we were chopping it up at homecoming, and you were, uh, man, you were just dropping some nuggets on me as far as, you know, how you've been able to move in the, you know, in the stock world and the crypto world. Um, you have some, you know, some real creative, savvy things that you were, you were um, giving to me. So I was just wondering, man, you know, if you can share some of that with us, give us a little background about yourself. Um, you know, we just actually just give us all your secrets. You know, that's why I'm having you <laughs> <on> right now. <laughs> man, go down the line. Start at one. <laughs> yeah, when we when we were shopping up at homecoming, I, I don't have too many secrets, but you know, I got into uh, investing probably shoot like 2000 like stock trade in like 2008 ish or so um you know i'm still kind of, i'm still kind of mad at myself because you know when bitcoin first hit you know i just really i didn't move on it at all i just kind of 
Uh, we'll, we'll see what this does. But um, I eventually start putting money into it. Uh, I put a little bit into it like around 2011, I think it was. And then like I really moved heavy uh, 2017 and um, you know 2018. And then when um, uh, the pandemic first hit around that time, Bitcoin was trading at, I wanna say it was like 36 or 3,800 a coin. And uh, I actually, you know, came into some money. So I went ahead and bought up a whole bunch, you know, as much as I could, just because I felt like it was going to do something major moving forward and, and you know, happened to be right about Bitcoin, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah. Then I just kind of just kind of branched out, um, you know, the Ethereum, uh, you know, most recently like Cardano, which is not doing um, that great, but they looked like they were set up they were poised to, to do something in the future, you know? Um, so we'll just see, have to see how that plays out. And, um, you know, from there, just, you know, I, honestly, you want to look at how to retain as much as your profits as you possibly can, you know? Um, you know, I know it's not, uh, you know, probably like some advanced knowledge, but finding out about trading through a, a Roth IRA. And I think that's what we were talking about at home coming to. Right, right. Um, so I found out that, you know, when I got hip to, I can put my, you know, whatever I contribute to that account, you know, I can pull out, but any profits that are gained or, you know, that tax, you know, you're not taxed on that, on that profit. Um, but I can always pull out. So, you know, if I put, you know, 10,000 into, you know, into that account, trade on it, make some money, I can always pull out my contribution without facing any, any penalty. You just can't, you just can't touch the profits. Um, and, you know, I mean, that, that that's really been huge for me, uh, finding that out. But right. um, that was, sorry, that was but, the one thing that stuck out. That was the one yeah, thing that yeah, stuck so out. Don't, we don't do that again, Rich. Uh, I, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure I quite got it. Uh, you, you said that you, I, I know what the Roth IRA is, and you can put money in. Um, yeah. You, you said you can so pull. If you can, yeah, you can pull your contribution out without okay. penalty. You just can't, like, if you put in 10 grand, you make 20. You can't take out 15. If you take out 15, you're getting hit with your penalties, your tax and everything. But if, no. you, if you pull out your 10, you're fine. Okay. That's a good nugget. Right. So you yeah. pulled out that 10 and you were able to make more investments and make more moves. Mm -hmm. And make more right. moves. Okay. You know, and I can re reallocate those funds to something else, um, you know, which I did because mainly, you know, trying to get in on the ground floor of this NFT thing when I start, you know, because I like, I, I always, search YouTube, I'm on Twitter, um, just trying to see what was bubbling, what's happening, what the people were talking about. Um, you know, and, and luckily I was able to get on the ground floor. Um, it, it was an up and coming company called Recur. I'm not sure if you guys have even heard of Recur. So they sold these, uh, almost like these, these OG passes pretty much to help get their company started. So I invested $600 into their company, which gains me early access to all of their NFT drops. So they just had their very first drop uh, on Monday, this past Monday. So they've signed they've signed deals with NCAA, uh, like your Hello Kitty, you know, just really popular things, you know. So it's almost like digital collectibles as far as like uh, cards, but um, the passes themselves actually have doubled in price. So that three hundred that I spent on each of those passes, people are actually buying those. Actually, I have a rare pass, and that's another thing. So each pass that you're assigned that's minted is assigned a number in a different color. Some of the passes are made, um, you know, there's 10,000 passes out there. There are other passes that there may only be five. So I happen to have a really rare pass. And, and the pass that I have actually resold on the marketplace for like eight grand, even though I only paid 300 for it. And that doesn't do anything but give you access to these early opportunities to get to, to accumulate, you know, your, your digital assets. Um, but I mean, that market right now, I mean, it's moving. Um, are you guys familiar with VV? Have you heard of VV? No. Different types uh, so, of VV. <clears throat> okay, so this is another um, NFT platform. Um, they've signed deals with Marvel, Disney, uh, and they also host a lot of, uh, you know, just up and coming artists. Um, so mainly on this website, you'll get your, your digital collectibles. One of the huge ones, actually, I was, I was kicking myself because I set my alarm for 11 o'clock. They released the uh, 1968 James Bond um, Aston Martin, that silver Aston Martin. 
The retail, the retail price was $1,000. In 30 minutes after, after the market reopened, somebody bought that car for $400,000. Wow. Hey. And it's, and it's all, I mean, and it seems kind of crazy on the surface because it's all, it's all speculative, you know, like the, 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 you know, we're setting the value, you know, it really doesn't have value. If, if the people say it's not worth anything, then it's not worth anything. Exactly. So it's all, right. it's well, all a risk. Right. It's all a gamble. <laughs> you don't know what direction something's going to go. Um, but luckily you just, I try to find things that are rare and that, and that's the, that's the key. Like, um, I got a Spencer Dinwiddie card, you know, he's not that great of a player. I mean, you know, he's okay. You know, but that car costs two bucks and it's already trading at 50, you know, so it's just like those small, like incremental gains that you can get. But, you know, it's all about getting the, the, the complete sets. Like I have, uh, you know, stamps. I mean, it, it, on the surface, it just seems really silly, but there is tons of money to be made in these markets. Yeah, and then I you... see that. Like, um, <laughs> I was, I was, um, in the morning, I listened to the Breakfast Club, and yeah. they just dropped their first NFTs. So it's like, how do you vet which NFT to buy? Like, I, I know it's a whole bunch of people out there taking pictures, selling in NFTs, but mm -hmm. how do you know which one to go after? Like, wh what's the process of buying one? Yeah, I mean, me personally, I'm going after... So I'll do research and find out how many are going to be minted. So let's just say like, like if BB, like, so there's, there's the uh, minting details that are provided with all the NFTs. So you'll know exactly how rare or how common your NFT is that you're looking to purchase. I'm not going to buy something where they've minted 40 or 50,000 of them. You know, like I'm not, that's the, those aren't the ones I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get the ones where there are anywhere between 500 to like maybe 8,000 of them minted. Those are going to be extremely weird because you're thinking because like once they mint them, they don't mint anymore. And that's it for the entire world. So like I have a, a, a group collectible that they, they minted, uh, actually it was 500 of them. I paid, I think it was like maybe like $10 for it. That thing is reselling for, for three grand. So I'm just sitting on it, waiting to see what the market does. You know, if it starts to dip, I'll go ahead and let it go. If, well, I'll try to sell it, you know, hopefully somebody will buy it. But if not, I'm just going to ride it out and, and see where it is in a few years. So Richard, but, if you're buying these on, on VV? Yeah, so I, I, I use VV, I use Recur. Okay. Um, there's also uh, another outfit. It's, um, oh, just the name just lost me. I, had to, I, I get it to you. But uh, they just had their first drop on, on March 8th. Um, it's like uh, these like, teddy bear type collectibles, um, you know, they're anywhere between say $10, $50. I mean, they're already reselling right now for, you know, one Ethereum coin, which is, you know, what is that right now? Like $2,600? 2, $2,600, yeah. yeah, that's good money. Yeah. So yeah. What, what drives the, well, two questions. Um, is there a centralized place where you keep all your NFTs? I'm just thinking like back in the day when we collected baseball cards, we put them all in plastic, yeah. and put them in a folder. Um, mm -hmm. is there a centralized place to, are you housing your NFTs and then what drives the value of the NFT? Yeah, well, so, too. yeah so I, I actually have uh, several digital wallets that I keep everything in. So Recur has their own wallet. Um, VV has their own wallet. Um, I also have a MetaMask account uh, where I, you know, have some cryptocurrency be just because I've, uh, I've been trying to acquire some digital real estate um, and I've been looking at have my eye on a few few different uh platforms um so I, I keep some of the nfts in there but as far as what dictates the price it, it's it's us it's the people it's what somebody's willing to pay for it you know a lot of times you know they'll release these collectibles they'll throw them on the marketplace somebody will just set a price and you'll see what people pay you know if, if that if that object doesn't move they can lower the price and it just keeps going until you know until it moves and that's what the price is I mean, it also is, is dictated by the rarity. You know, if there's not that many of them, like there's a lot of James Bond fanatics out there, obviously. There's a lot of Hello Kitty fanatics, people that want to collect Bond the whole- James Bond not Hello Kitty. 
Oh, you, <laughs> yeah, you were, yeah. Man. I was a little late, but yeah, James Bond. Yeah, but I mean, you know, if, if you have, uh, you know, if some people want to collect the whole set, it's kind of like uh, Recur, you know, putting out the Fab Five. So they've been releasing, they're going to have a release every week for the next eight weeks. So people are going to hope that they get every single player from that starting five to have the whole set and then they'll sell that whole set, you know. I mean, that probably... shouldn't be worth that much money, man. They lost to North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, I'm, just using them as a, I'm just using go, them as an example. You go, know? go Heels. <laughs> go Heels. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, it, I mean, the more I learn about it, uh, it it's crazy. Um, so I've been trying to get on the ground floor. I, I you know, sadly, sad to say, like, I missed my opportunity, but uh, Somium Space is a, uh, is a metaverse. Uh, they actually signed a, a contract with Tesla to produce their uh, haptic suits, you know, like the suits you can actually put on and feel everything that's happening in the game, kind of like a, you know, oh, in a wow. movie. Man, I ain't even heard of that. Hold on, say it again. Yeah. Say, say that again. <laughs> Uh, Somium space, that's the metaverse. Damn. So you don't so, need goggles so, anymore. You're going to put on a suit? <laughs> yeah, you can put on a whole suit and you can feel everything that's happening. So uh, me, me, and one of my, me and one of my partners, we've been trying to, we, we put our heads together, our funds together to acquire some, some digital real estate just because the main players out there is Decentraland and uh, the Sandbox. You know, that's where everybody was going. So, you know... <laughs> Paying eighteen thousand dollars for a small parcel of digital land doesn't really sound that great, you know. So I'm trying to get on the ground floor um, of something that's up and coming. And Somium Space uh, is one of those. Uh, Blocktopia and uh, and Treeverse is the other one. Treeverse looks kind of like Zelda, but people for some reason play it. But um, a small parcel of land will run you about anywhere between four to eight thousand dollars for a small one but if you want to get a large one you know you're going to be in the the the, the 18 to you know twenty five thousand dollar range and the okay, Rich, you I'm, gonna, look... I'm gonna stop you right there because go ahead you, you piqued my interest and and i mean you're, you're kind of the second guest we've had to really dive into this nft stuff and metaverse stuff and i, I guess just talk about the the idea or the concept of digital land I mean, I mean, really, it's just they've literally taken everything that's in our current reality <laughs> and minted it and placed it into the artif artificial reality. Um, so anything that you can do here, you can do there is what they're mm -hmm. going to kind of like. I, I don't know if you guys have kids and they play like Roblox. Yeah, yeah, my kids do. <clears throat> I, I have stock in Roblox. <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I do too. <laughs> it's yeah, tanking right like, now, but yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my son played it so much, I had to buy some. Me too. I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it did pretty well at, at first, you know, when it out the gate, but you know, everything's kind of tanking right now. Yeah, it's tanking. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just so, wondering, like, what do you do, you know, once you once you acquire some digital? Land, oh, okay. Yeah, I got you. So. My, what my plan was, because one of my relatives actually is, is benefiting from this right now. So they actually got a piece of digital land um, close, to a, uh, close to a road, like an entry point where people kind of port into that, that artificial world. And uh, they've actually had uh, Adidas and Apple actually paying them a passive $10,000 a month to market uh. in that space. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yes. So, okay, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, and part of my ignorance about the, because the metaverse is, it's kind of like we, we say Google for everything. So there's all these different metaverses, but how do you know which one closely resembles like what we're doing today? So like today, I know where I want to buy real estate. I know what a house is worth in a certain market. How do you mm -hmm. gauge the value of the real estate market and all of these different metaverses and which one you should be, basically which, which virtual market should you be buying in? Yeah, so a couple things that I look at, um, you know, before getting into it, because a lot of times, you know, you're trying to get in on the ground floor, you're trying to be a pioneer um, investor, right? So it's, it's looking at the team that's behind that project um you know seeing what you know what i mean making making sure they actually know what they're doing they can build 
a space that can that can hold you know uh, two hundred thousand users at once. You know, kind of servers are they using? Like, what are the plans for the future? Just kind of really digging into the company. You know, can they do what they say they're going to do? You know, um, that's ultimately what I look at. Also, the growth year over year because a lot of these play, like metaverses really kicked off. I would have to say, like when it really started to pick up, maybe like 2017, 2018. And, you know, it's just like, what's the growth been? I mean, Somium Space, you know, as of, I want to say it was like uh, 2021, they had maybe like a thousand subscribers, people that used it daily. But once they signed that contract with Tesla to build that, that suit, I mean, it skyrocketed, you know, and, it, and they were offering land for sale. I mean, like right now, if you go to OpenSea, you'll see tons of, of parcels of land for sale, but I mean, they're so far over, you know, over the, uh, the original price that it, re it really doesn't make sense um, to get into it now. So that's why I'm just trying to locate and find a different metaverse to kind of buy into because you don't know which one's gonna pop at all. I mean, it, it, it's, I mean, it's gambling in a sense, you know, you're just <laughs> trying to make the best educated guess that you can um, on a project. And I thought there was only one metaverse. So you're yeah, telling me there's, there's like, multiple no, metaverses? No, no. <laughs> it's different. Yeah, yeah, different yeah, there's ones. Tons of, yeah, there's different ones. There's, there's tons of them out there that, that are popping up. But um, up and coming, you know, uh, Treeverse, which I say it looks like Zelda. If you, if you took a look at Treeverse, you'd be like, what is this? But, but people are playing it. They're engaging with it. Blocktopia is dope. The graphics, everything on Blocktopia is, is amazing. Wow. Um, but it appears that their, their growth and what they'll be able to handle um, seems a little bit limited, you know, so, I mean, but. So what would it take for somebody to create a metaverse? Like who owns these different metaverses? And how do they, I mean, how do they profit off of that? I mean, they profit just through, uh, just kind of how like your Facebook does, you know, the more users you get, the, the higher your advertising dollars are. I mean, that, that's how they make money because you're really not paying money to like, you and I, Bill, we wouldn't pay, be paying money to join the metaverse. We would just create an account, log in. But like, uh, like my 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 family member, they're in uh, Decentraland. Decentraland is like one of the largest next to Sandbox. So you know your Adidas, your Apple, your Ataris. You know they're just putting up ads and paying people to utilize it, their their spaces. So us five together we could just come together and create a, a metaverse. Oh, no, I mean, you gotta have some some coding programming experience to- right, some oh. computer programming. <laughs> yeah, 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 to, to, to build oh. that. <laughs> that's, but that's, that's yeah, the but way of where we're trying to push students into coding mm -hmm. so they can create these type of spaces um, yeah. so they can profit off of them. You know what I mean? If you get two yeah. or three- Go ahead, sorry. No, I'm just saying, if you get you know two or three like-minded coders, you can create a metaverse, you know. So that's that's mm -hmm. like a career field that I may have to be yeah. pushing my, my daughters into a little bit. Yeah, but Bill, if you wanted to, you could you could purchase if you go on uh, OpenSea, you could purchase your own universe within a metaverse, and then you could build that thing up, kind of like how the kids do with uh, uh you know, what I'm saying uh, Roblox, mm -hmm. build your house, build everything, and then you could encourage or entice people to visit your your universe within that metaverse and everything would be yours and that doesn't take any coding or programming experience you're just kind of piggybacking on the already already existing uh, platform and then you could charge people like i could create a gym in my universe and people could bring their characters there to work out yeah and i could charge them five dollars for workout clothes you know what i'm saying <laughs> aren't they like uh having like concerts and like roblox like oh yep yeah snoop did snoop snoop uh snoop had a concert that was in sandbox i know travis scott did uh what yeah, was travis scott. What's, yeah what was the other one i mean it's not a metaverse but it's kind of like that the uh, fortnite i think he did one in fortnite yeah, yeah. i watched uh i watched the super bowl in the um in quote unquote sofi stadium through the the metaverse thing um and that's another quick, another question is the access point to all these different metaverses, the VR goggles, or is there other access points? Uh, yes, mainly, mainly the VR goggles, uh, you know, or AR goggles. Um, but Treeverse, like there's a couple that are kind of like two dimensional, uh, where you could just play on your computer. 
This is crazy, man. I mean, I went, it, to, it I went to the liquor store the other day, and I'm trying to use my card because I haven't had cash on me in so long. And he's like, cash only. I'm like, cash? Like, <laughs> cash is so, like, obsolete to me now. Like, I don't need it anymore. It's like we're living, like, almost in a cashless society. You should have yeah, told that I mean, man, you know I'm the owner of the B-Dub land? <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be your metaverse, B-Dub yeah. land. You better get up on it. <laughs> yeah. You said what? Yeah, they, you better get up on it. They definitely taking us in the direction of a capsule society, especially with that executive order that was signed, what was that, like five, six days ago by Biden? To, uh, yeah, what, you know, what, what is he, that about? Uh, I mean, I, I might have missed that. I, I, I don't, yeah, I don't know too much about it. All I know is that he's just pretty much given, uh, you know, kind of like the, the nod and, and the funding for yeah, every uh, government agency. Dollar. Yeah, yeah. Make it make it less volatile, make it a little bit more stable. Um, also put in some protections, uh, you know, from fraud. And, you know, I mean, really, it's, you know, they're going to be controlling everything. We went to a cashless society. I mean, I, I don't know. That's, you know, I have my own opinions about that, but. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, have, not. I have no cash on me right now. Like, I don't have any physical dollars. Like, I went to the car wash today. I had to scramble for change. Like, I don't, I don't have any cash on me. No, yeah. I need something to swipe. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I heard you got oh, yeah, old dust. The, you be walking around yeah, with. Yeah, they shut that down during the pandemic. I got mad pesos, man. Nobody, nobody was taking <laughs> I got a, cash. I got a money <laughs> phone of pesos over here, man. Hey, I got, I got silver <laughs> coins, man. <laughs> <laughs> so I, do I any of do y'all um, do any of y'all uh, purchase in, NFTs or in you know looking at getting into the metaverse land? We all uh, almost be well. I think we're all fairly new to NFTs, and we've had you will be our third guest who who spoke about NFTs. Um, I just it I understand what it is, but I'm like, why am I better served investing in? digital real estate versus taking my 10,000 and going buying a physical house that I can touch back in like my hometown or something like that. So mm -hmm. just mentally, I haven't wrapped my, my, my brain around the value and the, the marketability and the, the demand for digital land. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I, I, I feel that I just, you know, from what I've seen, um, you know, if, if you can get something, if you get, it's, it's just like, it's just like real life. If you can find some prime real estate next to some water in, in metaverse land near a road that people are, you know, heavily traveled. I mean, once that, that uh, utilization, like that membership jumps up, I mean, companies are finding people. Hey, can we, can we advertise mm -hmm. here? Can we do this? You know, That's and crazy. now, you, now you're making, you make, yeah, you, you, you're making money doing nothing. Sounds you know, like you our don't next even have project. To build, you don't even, right. yeah, you won't even have to build a home or really interact with it if somebody's just advertising in that space. Yeah, you ain't got to rehab it or nothing. Just put that. You ain't got to do <laughs> nothing. All right. What's the, I guess, what's the protections? And I, you've, you've said it a couple of times, that, like it's gambling. So what, obviously you're, you're doing a lot of research is making you say, hey, I'm comfortable gambling X amount of money for these different yeah. Um, yeah. digital items. Like, so talk about that process when you're when you're looking for something. Obviously, you spoke about the rarity, but what makes you comfortable to spend X amount of dollars and say, "Hey, I believe in this." I mean, because we we've seen you know different platforms, we've seen different um, things like MySpace was big. MySpace basically no longer exists as it was. So we've seen mm -hmm. big things come come crashing down. Yeah, and, and, and that's going to happen with the metaverse, I mean, I feel, because, you know, um, you know, because there's only so much space, because it's not an infinite amount of space in these metaverses. So at some point, you know, if, if the company's not keeping up with the, uh, you know, the number of uh, members that are interacting with, with, their, with their project, you know, it, like my space, remember when everybody's loading the songs and everything on there and everything started to sl slow down and your page wouldn't load and, mm -hmm. you know, Facebook hit and it was just like this seamless service where you know you couldn't do music but everything just worked a lot smoother it's going to be the same thing with the with the metaverse and what i look for is um companies that are set up to be able to or they're putting things in place the technology in place to be able to handle that that increase in um in membership um 
you know, as far as, you know, really being protected. I mean, it's just about, you know, feeling comfortable believing in it. I look for uh, other companies outside known um, entities that are actually signing on to be a part of that project as well. That's also plays it plays a factor into me feeling comfortable um, within with investing, you know, large sums of money um, within those projects. Now, re recur. I mean, if they didn't if they didn't have those contracts signed with the NCAA, I probably wouldn't have done it because Hello Kitty wasn't enough for me. You know. <laughs> 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 you know, that's but, a good point that you make. <laughs> but also, like I, I, I was scanning Twitter about Recur, and there was a lot of buzz, a lot of buzz about Recur and and what they were trying to do, and the folks they were meeting with. Uh, their leadership had a really good reputation, so I was like, okay, I'll invest. You know, the a total of six hundred dollars to buy these two passes, um, because you know six hundred dollars is like if you lose it, okay, you yeah. know, whatever, you know, type of thing. So it wasn't a, a huge investment. It's not not like me going out and putting up twenty thousand to buy a piece of land in somium space. You know, it's not that. That that's mm -hmm. different because if, if you put twenty grand into a digital space and um, you know, and they just tank it, it goes nowhere. You know, I could have used that fund somewhere else. I mean, I could have sat in my my four hundred one k. Could have sat in my investment account. You know, I could have done something else with. It. Yeah. So it sounds like you know. What direction is the metaverse going? Are they latching themselves to, you know, a major company? Because you said something about Marvel. Well, you know, Marvel's pretty, mm -hmm. I mean, pretty reputable. So if, if I will feel comfortable, yeah, yeah. I will feel comfortable yeah. latching myself to a, a company like Marvel. Yeah, and that's and that's VV. VV has that contract with Disney, uh, Marvel. Uh, I want to say Paramount Studios. So. You know, buying those digital assets, by getting up, getting into those products, you know, you feel completely comfortable. I mean, those are well-established right. companies. You know, right? So, are you I, saying DV or BV? BV, like V is in Victor. E, okay. Vic, yeah. But uh, and VD. Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. <laughs> are you using Are you using some of the st same strategies that you use in the stock market for NFTs and and crypto? Yeah. So if, if, well, so what, I'm usually ready. what I do, so for, <laughs> so like I have some first edition comic books, you know, and you know, when I hear about the launches, um, I'll go out and see what the actual physical product is doing, you know, because if, if, you know, it's the first edition of uh, Superman, you know, I'm just saying, for example, let's just say it was trade, you know, people are buying that thing. The floor price is, you know, 30 bucks. I'm not going to waste my time, but if that product is, is is going for, you know, 10 grand, 20 grand, 30 grand, then I'm going to go ahead and invest in that digital asset on top of if, if they're not going to produce that many, if they're not minting that many, um, you know, I know it's only going to be 500, then I'm, I'm going to give it a shot and see what I can do. Cause I know that product is just going to, you know, be worth money and I can sell it. And you're able to sell those digital assets right away. Like 30 minutes after you acquire them, you can put them on the marketplace for sale. Is there capital gains involved? Uh, it's all through. It's all crypto. I mean, okay. so yeah, yeah. So <laughs> that looked look kind of sly. Yeah, like, that, hey. was a, that was a suspect <laughs> answer, right? Right. There. <laughs> hey, deregulated, right? Deregulated. Right, Rich, Rich yeah. trying to have us jammed yeah. up, man. Uh, <laughs> he's like, it's all crypto. <laughs> yeah, he says it's crypto. You know, yeah. Yeah, that, was the, that, was the, that was the first answer he hesitated with, like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> They're trying yeah, to the regulate view, it, The man. views expressed by Rich James are not the views. <laughs> 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 hey, Rich, uh, if we could pivot, um, talk about your uh, your companies, man. Your uh, um, Oh, yeah, like, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. so I, I started, uh, yeah, so I've been, man, I started professionally training people 1999 like when I was in school mm -hmm. uh, working at working at Fitworks in, in Cincinnati um, and then you know luckily so getting started you know I just wanted to like work out you know I was always in the gym training and then uh, uh, you know I wanted to help other people help other people do it just because you know in our community you know you grow up you know eating eating things you shouldn't be doing and people are unhealthy um, and that was like my first one of my first clients was over overweight older black lady, you know, and it's, she reminded me 
of a family member. So I just kind of dove in, um, actually ended up taking some classes at, at UC, uh, exercise science, nutrition science, um, just further my education. And then upon graduating, I just kind of continued training people on the side before I decided, I, you know, I need to do this thing for real just because my membership was was really picking up and, and you know, word of mouth was, was really traveling. So created five strength uh, and conditioning in 2013. Um, you know, and had the opportunity to train, you know, um, Olymp through Olympic weightlifting, bodybuilding, you know, CrossFit, just covering the whole, the whole gamut and just along the way, just increasing my education through, uh, you know, various uh, courses, doing seminars and uh, apprenticeships, just being with people that were a lot smarter than me and just really learning the game. Um, just because I think when, when people come into, uh, you know, to, into the exercise business, you know, in Ohio, you don't have to have a certification to train anybody, which, uh, you know, which is crazy. I mean, because, you know, it's a high risk, a high risk environment, you know, being in the gym doing stuff, people get hurt backs, legs, elbows, wrists, and to uh, put yourself in, as, a, as a client to put yourself in the hands of somebody who doesn't um, have the knowledge of how to fix certain elements or uh, adjust <laughs> for, um, you know, maybe some physical limitations that somebody might have is, is completely crazy, but just been blessed over the years, man. It's been, it's been a long, long time coming. Um, you know, right now membership is, is, is way up. I have, uh, I have an app um, through uh, true coach um, and I'm able to deliver programs, you know, uh, nationwide. So I have people all over the country that I'm training remotely on top of my regular nine to five job. As a Great. as a data analyst and programmer, you do a lot plan. going on. Oh yeah, man! I, I I stay busy, stay busy. It's you know nine to five here, and then I'm off in the gym training people. You know, I pretty much, you know, I mean, you know, my family hates it, but you know, I pretty much work seven days a week. Did you uh, Did you go to the Arnold? Yeah, I went to the Arnold this year. Yeah, it was it was they, they spread it they spread everything out. So they had stuff at the Celeste Center, so it wasn't so congested, you know, because due to the pandemic, they were trying to control the foot traffic. Mm. So they had a, they opened up some different venues, but it, it was interesting, man. They had a slap fighting contest, man. I saw this dude get knocked out. Hey, <laughs> man, that, that's the new way, man. Slap. Yeah, slap. I've been seeing a bunch of that on, uh, on Instagram. I'm like, why is this even oh, yeah. a sport? <laughs> oh, yeah, he, he was out of there. He was out of there. They, they had the... Uh, they had the, the ladies up first, and I'm like, man, I, I didn't even know women was into this thing, you know. But hey, man, it's crazy. Rich, I've seen that. Hey, Rich, he didn't he didn't roll with it. <laughs> nah, he, uh, he, he he did not roll with it at all. He he rolled on the floor for a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Where he got up, maybe chalking up, man. <laughs> and they, they measure it like this. <laughs> yeah, the, the, that's the, that's the crazy. Power. I mean, I can I can't imagine just sitting there while a guy is measuring you for the slap. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like illegal to like hit them on their neck or something like that too. Like you get a penalty for that. I'm like, this is a real sport, man. Like, and that's where they hit them at. They hit them at that, that jaw <laughs> neck junction right there. <laughs> <laughs> that is a real junction. sport. That is, <laughs> no. that is crazy. And I'm like, man, y'all paid to be here. Y'all paid nah, to be here. I'm like, a, a slap used to be a fightable <laughs> offense, man. <laughs> now, now it's sport, Blast. It's sport. Yeah, yeah, man. man. Shit. They, they stay stiff up. though. They they don't roll. They stay yeah, stiff. Yeah, they, like, they, they, they tight. They tight. How, how strong your neck is, really. Just, mm. <laughs> hey man, yeah, it, gotta... I, I seen the one on um uh, on Instagram. I think uh, Logan Paul was uh I don't know if he was commentating or he was a judge, but that's the that's where I was at. That was at the Arnold. That's the one he I was at. So <laughs> dude, dude was tight, and his leg after he got slapped, he just his legs just buckled like he just he just went down. <laughs> <laughs> How much is the prize? It can't be worth a knockout. <laughs> man, I hope they get. Yeah, it, it got to be a few thousand. You know. What yeah, I'm, I'm like, is is anything worth a televised slap? Yeah. <laughs> <Perfect, man. laughs> give Give me a good old fashioned uh, thumb thumb war, man. <laughs> On a slap. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I declare war. <laughs> yeah. And cats be cheating in that too, man. <laughs> oh yeah, I always, always cheat on my kids, man. As soon as they pin me, I just pull out the other finger, like, yeah, I got you. Man. Oh yeah, you yeah. that little that yeah, little index the, finger. Uh, pointer out. <laughs> yeah. I was like, Dad, you always do that. I'm like, hey man, I'm not losing. 
I can't. What happened to the arm arm wrestling contest, man? I mean, oh, yeah. All these strong cats, just get your arm down there and do some arm wrestling. You can get your arm broken arm wrestling. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, I think you can get your arm pretty. Yeah, up. I mean that one arm be bracing that that little peg or whatever they have. Man, they had a uh, they had a fitness uh, a pole fitness competition, man. Like little, <laughs> uh, watch watch this chick, man. She fell off from the top, hit that ground so hard. She tried to play it off. It was no playing at all. She stuck that ground way too hard. It was no playing at all. So, Rich, man, um, real quick before we before we wrap this up, um, just wanted you to talk briefly about like your your. Give your opinion on what's going on in the stock market right now and what kind of moves are you making to, you know, protect your investments? Are you, I mean, when we, we talk about, you know, when it's down like fire sales and clearance, you know what I'm saying? So what's your strategy to, to navigate through this, this downtime in the stock market? Uh, I mean, I'm not, I'm no expert, but uh, what I've been doing. So some of, you know, I got my, my long-term stuff. I'm just, I'm just holding, I'm just riding it out you know, the stuff that I really, really believe in, um, you know, some of the, the stuff that was, you know, I have some, uh, some stop losses set in. So a lot of my stuff automatically sold, you know, once it got to a certain point, just to lock in my profits. Um, but my long-term stuff, I'm just, I'm just riding it out. Cause I, I mean, I know it's going to, it's going to pick back up. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I mean, cause you know, you're, uh, cause I, I mean, I don't know what, what you guys invest in, but like, you know, a lot of my stuff and, um, is in biotech, um, a lot of technology stuff, a lot of fuel. Um, you know, I, I have shoot investments in some upcoming uh, electric car companies that I'm just kind of riding out. It, it really, it really took a big hit. Um, but where oh, where I got smacked was uh, was the Robinhood. I forgot mm-hmm. to set my stop loss on that. Oh, and, man. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you in Lucid? I, you know when they. What's that? Are you are you in Lucid? Mm-mm. No. Okay. There was an EV like car that um, I think I think Blast. Did you buy Lucid? Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm in on it. Yeah, we we I think we still trying to ride the wave, hoping that they <laughs> we, we was they eating delivered. for a while. Well, I mean, it took forever for me to eat, but then I was eating good for a while. Now that the food's been taken off my table, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm still I'm yeah. still all in with it. Til, Tilray, man, Tilray. <laughs> <laughs> who who was Lucid? Who was they producing cars for? Was that Ford or was that GM? No, they they were the new car brand. They were d- delivering uh high end EVs. I mean, it's a nice looking car. Um, yeah, they were they started they came through. Uh, I can't I can't think of the ticker name right now, but the car looks good. Oh, oh was, yeah, yeah, the car I, looks real my good. Bad. I, yeah, I got it confused because I, I invested in the, uh, the company out of uh, Lowerstown that got the uh, the four contract that mm-hmm. was supposed to produce their their F one fifty, and that was supposed to start in January, but that that really didn't go. Um, yeah, so and uh, VMware that was a, that was another good one uh, because you know they 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 broke away they became their own you know independent um, company because you know they were tied to Dell for a little bit so. Um, that's one that I'm hoping it'll really rebound um, in the future because I mean they they the company's solid. Seems like a good opportunity. Just need everything to get back flowing. Yeah. That's what's up, man. Hey, I'm gonna tell y'all right now. I I went ahead and had two beers. <clears throat> this one, yeah, right here. I seen the color change. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What is that, dude? I didn't know. I thought it was going to be an IPA. This is a, like a stout. <laughs> yeah, it went to black. I'm like, man, mm-hmm. nice color change, man. <laughs> is it legit? As soon as I cracked it, I like, I couldn't, I couldn't turn back. <laughs> <laughs> it's ten percent, so it's like, yeah. I'm having it's... trouble staying awake with this thirteen. <laughs> I guess it... <laughs> that sounds like hey, a Bill. Cute. Hey, Bill, what you drinking? What is that? This is a street side. This is a oatmeal cream cookie. 10%. Oh, okay. yeah, that's, yeah, that's thick. It probably got lactose in it, don't it? You know what? I ain't afraid to mess up the air, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I think, Dub, did you get a, a street side sponsorship you didn't tell us about? I think your last 10 beers have been street side, man. Who, me? Yeah, man. 
I, I reviewed this one. <laughs> no, I was just saying, I think you got the sponsorship. Yeah, I mean, you seen, but every, every week I'm tagging street side. <laughs> right, man. Like, did you get a sponsorship he, you didn't tell us about? He just gave him a quick plug. He already just gave him a quick plug without even plugging him. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. look, guys, I just had the street side. <laughs> <laughs> he like he like Slaughterhouse signing some outside deals. All right. So, Rich, um, before we wrap up, uh, how can people get in contact you get in contact with you if they're interested in you know what I'm saying personal training, fitness programs, meal plans, and whatnot? Oh yeah, yeah. You can uh, you can find me on Instagram at Five Strength. Um, you can also uh, email me. It is uh, liftcoach3 at gmail.com. Yep, and I specialize I'll be, in in I'll be ordering bodybuilding, some training, training meals. Yeah. What'd you say? I'll say I'll be ordering some of your fattier meals. <laughs> uh. <laughs> man, I create I, I create summer bodies over here, man. You know? yeah. I'm all about dad bodies, man. <laughs> dad bodies. Rich James fried chicken and water. Right, man, can, you, <laughs> right, yeah. can you give me a meal plan based on tacos and tequila? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Rich, Rich James. <laughs> Chicken and waffles, yeah. man. Deep yeah. fried. <laughs> hey, man. We wanna we wanna thank you for for stopping by, man. Like I said, the NFT conversation is always really informative for for us. Um, I'll speak for myself spe specifically because it's it's new. Um, but everybody seems excited about it, and it's something that you know we all try to try to educate ourselves on and become become more knowledgeable about that space. Uh, so definitely appreciate you stopping by, you know what I'm saying, kicking knowledge and whatnot. Um, first conversation oh, too, man. Hey, yeah. yeah. We had your sands on last week, man, so y'all back to back. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. It was great. You know, I, I definitely encourage everybody to go out there and, and do your research, you know, um, look into those, 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 those platforms, those projects that I mentioned, I mean, because there's a lot of money out there, you know, and you don't want it to be, you know, a situation to where you're looking down the road four years ago, like, oh, yeah, somebody yeah. told me Man. I didn't do it. Yeah. Everybody's, you know, millionaires. Well, Rich, so Rich uh, I think I speak for everybody, man. We want you to be our uh, metaverse real estate agent. So, you know, find us out. <laughs> <man, man. laughs> let us let us know. We'll suit you to yeah. bread, man. Hey, you know, it'll be a dope conversation. We just get Rich and Don on here and we just shut the hell up and watch, let them talk. Yeah, <laughs> man. Yeah, you're right. Go back and you're forth. Right. Yeah. yeah, just let them talk, man. That'll be a great conversation. Just take notes. Yeah, hey, Rich, I can still do more push ups than you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know what would be dope is if Rich and Don just invested our money for us. <laughs> <laughs> and we ain't got to deal with this crazy <laughs> metaverse shit. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey. Hey, my, my son is cool. He'll tell you. I've been telling him to buy Bitcoin for years. And when 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 the price went dipped to uh to 38, what was it, 36, 3800 whenever I bought it, I was like, buy everything. And they was like, oh, I'm still doing research. I'm still doing research. <laughs> I'm like, all right. That thing shot up to 63 or you know, whatever it was when it first yeah. hit, hit the 60. They was like, damn, I should have listened. Yeah, I, somebody oh. told me to buy when it was around when it was in the five thousands, and I just I, I I wasn't there yet. I didn't. I hadn't done the research, and I haven't seen Homeboy. But I'm sure he's probably driving around a Lamborghini or something like that because he's been in there since yeah. since the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, because you know, a lot of people didn't understand it. You don't understand yeah. it. You know, you don't want to put real dollars behind, it, especially like if if somebody's like, "Hey, you know, take fifty by fifty thousand of Bitcoin." You ain't mm -hmm. gonna do that if you don't understand it. No. Hey, what, what Darnell Rollins say? Beep beep. I'm rich, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> man. That's, yeah, that's how I felt. Yeah. That's how I felt when I was trying to tell y'all about Bitcoin. I was like, every time I put it in the chat, wouldn't nobody say nothing. I'm like, man, you got in like around the sevens, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Nah, that's good shit, man. Yeah, you you one of the, the pioneers of the group chat, man, talking oh, about Bitcoin. Y'all wouldn't. Yeah, y'all wouldn't sure. match on. It kind of discouraged mm -hmm. me. I should have bought more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah. Hindsight. Yeah. Everybody should have bought more. Right. But man, I mean, yeah, my boys, always my always boys ain't backing me. I mean, I bought yeah. some. I'm, I'm glad I got in. But hey, man, you got me into investing. You know what I'm saying? During yeah. the pandemic, you got me in because y'all y'all was putting in the chat all the time. 
And I was like, man, I don't know what they're talking about. Yeah, it was, was like, it was like FOMO, this. man. You got to hop in because your boys are doing it. You got to hop in. Yeah, I hopped in because of you. So, yeah. yeah. Well, well, I, think, I think everybody everybody got to invest in during the pandemic. Before we, <laughs> what before we, when we, when we, when we was quarantined. Before we close <laughs> out, like, what's, what's your, your outlook on Ethereum? Because that's the one I keep hearing that. You need to everybody should get an Ethereum, get an Ethereum, but Ethereum just seemed like it's at a it's just at a stalling point. Like I, I'm invested in it and I keep putting money into it, but it's just it's just sitting there. Like what's what have you seen or, or heard or, or researched about Ethereum? Yeah, I mean, and you know, and I don't I mean honestly, I don't I don't know too much too much about Ethereum. Like I, of course, like I'm in I'm in the same boat as you, like where I I've you know I started purchasing it early just because on a you know, when I was searching Twitter, you know, before, you know, Coinbase became a thing, you know, I was always seeing, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin, Ethereum. So I was like, what is this? So I think Ethereum, I, I bought Ethereum, I want to say that was, it was at $156, I think when I got in. And that's when I, when I started buying it. But from what I understand, I mean, their blockchain technology is, is pretty solid. Um, and it looks like it's here to stay. And, and like some of the metaverses that, that I was uh, discussing, that's all they trade in. Like that's, the only way you can buy things in yeah. the metaverse is using Ethereum or wrap, wrap ETH, which is just kind of like an upgraded version. So it's more compatible with, with those, uh, with those tech, like with the systems technology. But yeah, I mean, so, I mean, that's my motivation for buying all the ETH, you know, that yeah. I can. Okay. It's a, it's a safe play. I mean, Ethereum has always been a safe play for me. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Bitcoin has always been like one of those, wow, that's pretty expensive, but Ethereum was kind of like that second best thing that I was like, man, let me, let me put some money in Ethereum. Cause it wasn't, I, I, I felt like you said, I felt that it was safe play. I felt that it wasn't really going anywhere. Kind of like big tech, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. you know, Amazon's not going anywhere. So that's a safe play. So it's kind of like, you know, your Amazon and your, and your Microsoft, you know, those are safe plays all day long. Yeah. Uh, I know y'all, I know you're wrapping up, but before y'all go, are y'all taking part in that, uh, that, that Amazon split in June, you know, like where they and I'm, I'm breaking it down. It. I'm hopping in big time. Yep. I'm researching. How you hopping in? <laughs> 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 cash, man. Hopping in uh, cash. Straight cash. Right. <laughs> man, I'm hopping in with some Ethereum. <laughs> straight cash, <laughs> homie. <laughs> in the words of Randolph Moss, straight cash, homie. <laughs> yeah. That's Good cool. Stuff. Once again, Rich, thanks for uh, joining us, man. We appreciate all your knowledge, man. Welcome back anytime. Hops and Stocks Podcast, signing off. All right, Rich. Out. Stay healthy. Appreciate you, Rich. <laughs> yep. See you guys. Shell of a man if we ever depart from our heart to I'm riding with you. I'm riding with you.